Hi guys, welcome to Money by Sunny. Today, we'll be talking about zero-based budgets. Also known as zero-sum budgets, zero-based budgets are a budget type that require all of your money to be allocated to debt repayments, expenses, and savings. Ultimately, the objective is that your income minus your expenses and savings should equal zero by the end of the month. Every dollar has a purpose, leaving you with zero useless or miscellaneous dollars in your budget. This doesn't mean that you plan to end up with all your money spent. It just means that your income less your expenses and investments and savings should equal zero every month. It's a very specific budget in the sense that each expense item is carefully planned for and monitored. Let's go through the main steps in setting up a zero-based budget. Step 1. Like all budget types, we have to start with revenue or income. To do this, list out your income or take-home pay, which should include your regular paycheck plus all your side hustles. You can use last month's total income or an average of the last few months as a gauge in the event that your income is variable. Remember that this should be your net income and not gross, meaning your income after deductions such as taxes and other statutory payments. Step 2. List out your debt repayments or your installments. These tend to be pretty fixed and not vary too much from month to month, but be sure to break these down into the various loans that you may have. For example, if you are a property investor and have multiple mortgages, list them all out separately. Step 3. After this, it's time to write down your monthly expenses, remembering to be as detailed as possible. For example, instead of lumping food and groceries together, split them so that you get a more specific idea of how much is going to food and how much is going to your grocery shopping. You can also further break down your food budget to dining out and takeouts or deliveries. Once this is done, it's a simple case of seeing how much you have left over after subtracting your debt repayments and expenses from your income. Hopefully this is a positive number, meaning that you earn more than you spend each month. If it's negative, don't worry. At least you've gotten your expenses listed down in a detailed manner, so it'll be easier to go through each line to see where you might be able to reduce. Maybe you could skimp a bit on eating out, or maybe you could try buying more house brands when you do your grocery shopping. There are many ways of streamlining your monthly expenses. Now, assuming that you have some money left over after subtracting your expenses, it's time to give those leftover dollars a job. Depending on what your financial goals are, this could be things like putting this money into a high yield savings account for a future large ticket purchase or even a holiday, paying extra on some of your high interest loans such as credit card balances so that they get paid off faster. Once you do this, you should be left with $0 remaining, hence zero based budget. Now that you've worked out your zero-based budget, it's time to put it into action. To start off, you could use a spreadsheet such as Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets to list down your income as well as your expenses that we talked about earlier. Or if you like, you could use an app such as You Need a Budget or YNAB, Mint, etc., which has the advantage of making it easier to input your expenses on the go rather than having to wait until you get home each day so that you can fire up the spreadsheet on your computer. But it's up to you. Whichever you're more comfortable with and suits your lifestyle is the right choice. You can then list out your expenses line by line, along with the budgeted amount. As the month goes on, you can then fill in what you actually spent on these expenses so that you can compare your actual dollars spent versus what you budgeted. At the end of the month, it's review time to understand your actual spending versus your budgeted spending 
so that you can see where you were able to stick to your budget and where you weren't. And if you overspent in any particular areas, you can try to figure out why by thinking back to when you spent those dollars. Was there a particular incident or emergency that came up that required some extra expenditure? Maybe there were a couple of birthday presents during the month that you chipped in on. Due to its detailed nature, a zero-based budget allows you to really zoom in on where the expenses didn't go according to plan. Once you've done your month-end review, it's time for next month's budget. This could consist of the same expense items from last month, with the amounts to be adjusted up or down if necessary, based on your experience from the previous month. For example, despite being careful, sticking mostly to house brands, etc., you may have found that you overspent on your groceries budget by $100. You may then have to increase your groceries budget by $100 this month, but this will mean that this $100 will have to come from another budget category. You could also adjust your expense items, either removing or adding new items, again depending on what happened in the past month and what you expect in the upcoming month. The principles and the steps are the same. Every dollar of your income needs to have a purpose, whether it goes to bills or debt repayments, spending or savings. And at the end, you should be left with a nice round zero. Now let's go through some of the pros and cons of this budget type. Like all of the many different types of budgets out there, the zero-based budget has its plus points as well as its negative points. Here's a quick summary of the key items to think about before you consider implementing this budget for yourself. Let's start with the pros. Pro number one, control. Zero-based budgets give you control and great visibility on where your money should be going and also where it is actually going since every dollar of income is allocated to a specific purpose. As we briefly touched on earlier, this gives you the ability to really scrutinize each expense item and think about whether there is any possibility of reducing it. Pro number two, reduces misspending. They also eliminate the possibility of misspending your spare money, meaning the money left over after debt repayments and expenses on unplanned items or wants, since each dollar has its purpose carefully planned out. Let's now look at the cons. Con number one, detailed and time-consuming. The main disadvantage of a zero-based budget is probably the effort needed to maintain it. Due to their detailed nature, zero-based budgets require a fair amount of work to put into practice meaning that you'll have to be pretty diligent and disciplined in tracking and recording your expenses. This, of course, can be rather time-consuming. You'll need to take an honest look at your monthly and maybe even daily schedule to see if you can set aside time consistently to make this budget work for you. If daily updates are going to be too much to handle, you can consider tracking and entering your expenses every couple of days instead, or even on a weekly basis. You may just need to keep your receipts, which can be either paper receipts or digital ones, for example when you buy things online. This is so that you have an easy reference, rather than having to remember every single purchase you made over the last few days or the last week. Con number 2. Prescriptive The other disadvantage of a zero-based budget is that it's sometimes perceived to be overly controlling. Since it involves meticulous planning of each dollar of expenditure. Psychologically, it can be difficult for some to adhere to, and this can sometimes cause it to be abandoned. In favor of a budget that allows more flexibility and more leeway in terms of how your take home pay will be used. In conclusion, if you're new to budgeting, zero based budgets can be a bit difficult to use since they are fairly detailed. Some might even call them strict. You might want to consider starting out with a relatively simpler budget, such as the 50, 30, 20. 
and then gradually moving to a zero-based budget once you get the hang of things and get more comfortable with recording your expenses. I'll be covering the basics of the 50-30-20 budget in another video, so be sure to check that out. I hope you got some useful insights from this video. If you're interested in learning more about budgeting and financial literacy in general, then be sure to subscribe as I'll be putting up more useful videos that I'm sure you'll get a lot of value from. Give this video a like too if you found this content useful. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos on learning about money and personal finance. See you next time on Money by Sunny.